guys are still with me. I know it's the, it's the final stretch. I've only got about 200 slides, so we won't be too long. <laughs> no, I'm joking. As the intro said, uh, I'm Mdu Lutuli, and it's a pleasure to be here. Um, and I'm here to talk to you about, I'm investment manager at Lutuli Capital, I'm here to talk to you about the principles of managing money. Uh, very simply put, what we do is we help individuals turn one rand into two rand. Very simplistically put. So just what I'm going to touch on today, who, who am I, a little bit about the business, the principles of money with a special focus on, on gold, um, and then just end off on the morality of money and then we can have a bit of a Q&A. Okay. So I was very honored to be uh, invited here because when I first left uh, matric, it was to become a mechanical engineer. I had a full bursary with, with the beers and I went to, to tax. And after two years of doing engineering, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I have a lot of respect for you guys and I'm, not, I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure that I didn't even get to the hard part. So after two years, I was pretty certain that uh, I was not meant to be an engineer. Um, <clears throat> And at the moment, at, at that point, like I said, I, I was in a full bursary from De Beers. I owed them almost about uh, just over two hundred thousand. Um, had to drop out, look for work, pay them back, go back to work, uh, go back to school, study a new degree. I did financial management a bit, and it's been quite a scenic uh, uh, journey. Don't let this young face fool you. That's just good genetics. Um, it's been quite a journey. So I'm an investment manager. I help people create and manage portfolios. I've been in the industry uh, for almost nine years. I cut my teeth with, uh, with uh, NetBank, assisting their private banking clients, basically doing, doing portfolio management, which is just a fancy of saying investing. Their private banking clients, they would come, they would sit with me, they'd say, listen, we need a strategy, I've got X amount, I want to do X, Y, Z over such a term, and we create that for them. So that's where I cut my teeth before moving over to uh, Liberty Corporate, uh, the big blue giant, working uh, as an asset manager on their pension funds, which is is basically the same thing but I guess at a corporate level those of you who work for for private firms even the, the government guys they, they, they have GPF it's basically that um, managing the pension fund money uh, still with Liberty moved to Liberty retail which was working with individuals one-on-one -on -one. then I went to a private firm in, in, in Santon where I managed a team of about uh, eight guys the investment team and um, we ran the investment book there and the trading book all the way up to 2016, that's when I started uh, Latuli Capital. Um, some of my other stuff that I do, I'm a correspondent for, for CNBC Africa. Um, I always joke, the guys were taking a photo with me outside, I said, listen, no one in the finance industry is a celebrity. You know, you're big underground always. Um, but we work for CNBC Africa doing uh, market news and then economic news that goes all across the continent, Africa. Uh, I write for MoneyWeb, which is the third biggest online publication in terms of finance. The only guys who are bigger than us, it's uh, business, business Day and Fin24. Uh, and then I've got uh, a show every Friday on Radio 702. And basically on a week by week basis, we tackle different um, financial, financial topics. Okay. So I hope that just convinces you that I'm a little bit competent. <laughs> In terms of the business, if we look in numbers, like I said, our office is in Santon. Uh, we are a small boutique firm, and when I say small, I really mean small. It's me, it's my business partner and, and wife. Uh, I run the investment side of the business. She runs the lifestyle estate planning side. We each have an assistant, and we've got an administrator. And we run the business based on the American, American model. And what I mean by that is, I am your advisor. We're not a big corporate. All our clients know that you don't call a call center, you don't call. I speak to my clients every day. My clients know if anything happens. The big issue yesterday was the 
capitulation of the lira, the Turkish lira, so you know things like that. Sometimes, especially high nets with clients, they want to know how does that affect their portfolio, especially as we use our and hedge strategy. That's just the fancy of saying as a business we have taken a negative view towards the RAND. We do not believe in the RAND, so everything that we do in the business takes advantage of the RAND weakness. So our clients made a lot of money yesterday because as part of an emerging market currency, the weaker the RAND, the more money we make. We don't want a strong RAND. It's not patriotic, but it is what it is. Um, we got one cent in office. Uh, and like I said, between me and my business partner, we've got about 25 years combined experience in the industry. We 100% black owned, 50% female owned. You know, where's the tender forms? Because, you know. And we fast approaching almost a quarter of a billion in, in assets under management. And the business has only been going for about a year and 10 months. That's less than two years. We're very proud of that. Our target is to be managing a billion uh, in five years. Um, and then just go from there. And I think a lot of our success has really been built on the service model. I know a lot of people, whatever business they'll come and say to you, I will give you great service. What I learned through my long career in corporate is that the number one complaint <coughs> of any client when it comes to advisors uh, is a lack of service. You meet them, do, do, opens an account for you, then you never see him do again for the rest of your life. Or you see him do, but now he's selling cars. And you're like, aren't you my financial advisor? You know, what happened to that? Um, so we, don't, we have no ambition to ever become a big corporate. In fact, um, our maximum client book is 150, meaning that never will I have more than 150 clients. Um, we've done the numbers and we feel anything above that, uh, you start losing that personal touch. So what we consistently do, I mean that, that AUM number would be higher, but what we consistently do is we cull clients, we fire clients. People are not serious about the wealth uh, uh, journey. We just said, look, it's not for you. In terms of our book, we want to have about 20 high net worth individual, high net worth individuals are people with investable assets of 10 million and above, about 30 graduates, high potential graduates, uh, and then, must get my maths right, it's, I'm left with 100, huh? yeah? The other 100 is professionals, that's the middle range, people that, um, and that's who, we, that's who we look to, to target uh, and assist. Okay. And my, my speciality is in listed investments as opposed to unlisted investments. So what is the difference? Unlisted investments are physical investments. So uh, you want to go into property management. It's a building. You want to buy antique cars. You want to buy art. Uh, that's unlisted investments. Listed investments are equity markets. And that's the space that we play in. Um, I love equity markets. It's, it's very liquid. You have the whole universe to play with. You know, one of the things that we quickly tell our clients is that most South Africans have pretty much all their wealth in rands, um, which is which is, uh, don't mean to offend anyone, but very silly, because the South African economy makes up less than half percent of the global markets. If you were to go to a dollar millionaire and tell them to hold their wealth in rands, they'd probably first ask you, what are rands? And then once you explain that it's the South African currency, they tell you no. Why? You know, well, the, one of the reasons why we take a rand hedge strategy is that the strength or weakness of our currency is not even dependent on the decisions that the government makes. People shout at the government, but it's, it's not even their doing, you know. And we'll touch on that as we go along. Okay. So this is a very important slide because in this one slide, I'm going to give you the, the secret, the number one secret to becoming rich. I can, because the principle of becoming rich has been the same since the beginning of time. It's very simple. It's pay yourself first, or you can also phrase it as these days, what did the kids say, staying in your lane. It's that simple. It is really that simple. Wealth is not difficult. Creating wealth is the easiest thing to do. People just lack the discipline to do it, because it's not a quick thing to do. Okay, but creating wealth is just about 
paying yourself first. Here's what most people do. The money comes into your account. Okay, it's tax that comes into your account. You pay everyone, for, everyone else first. DSTV, cell phone contract, your mother, your brother, etc. Debts. And only at the end do you think, maybe I should think about me. What about me? Whereas if you're earning an income, your number one job is, I don't know phrase this, is how quickly can you fire yourself? How quickly can you get to a point where you have an, an asset that can pay you an income? Because that's what an asset is. It must pay you an income. But more importantly, pay you a sustainable income. A sustainable income greater than your expenses. Because only at that point are you financially free. Only at that point. And only at that point will you realize, do I like my job or not? Because now it becomes a choice rather than a means to sustain yourself. And that's what we help our clients do, is to realize this concept. And we always say to our clients, it's not about how much you earn, it's about how you structure your salary. And it's about realizing that nobody is more important than yourself. And everything comes after you have paid yourself first. So I'll quickly touch on, on the other two, and then I'll focus on the top left quadrant, the pay yourself first, because that's what we do. But this is very, uh, very rough, okay? So don't hold me to this, but it's a very good guideline that you can use in terms of how do you structure your salary. You basically dedicate about 60% of your gross salary to necessities, okay? And I've listed a, a few examples there, your bond, transport, insurance, groceries, etc., etc. 25%, that's yours. Do anything that you like with that. Really anything that makes you happy because creating wealth is not about punishing yourself. And we make that clear to, to our clients. It's not about denying yourself. Okay. Then it's about the other 15%. Because if you can use that properly, then I promise you, you can become financially free. You can get to a point where you say, I don't have to work. And that's why I said we created the business because in South Africa, for 94% of South Africans, that is just a pipe dream. Only 6% of South Africans can retire. Okay. Well, I'll put a disclaimer, they can retire with enough to sustain their standard of living. For 94% of South Africans, it's either they're going to work till they pass away, or when they do get kicked out to say, get out of here now, we need youthful employees, it means a huge downgrade in life. And what a lot of people in South Africa are not aware of is that the government has started implementing the, the default regulations for pension funds. And what that means is they are working towards, uh, they're working towards a day, one day, where if you were a working individual and had the opportunity to save for your own retirement, you will no longer qualify for the grant system because it's too big of a burden on the government. Our country's, our country's broke, and one of the reasons our country's broke is because we have more people on grant systems than there are people working. We have the highest unemployment rates, especially within the youth. So we, our economy is unable to generate an income high enough for us to run the country. So what have we done? We need to, we are forced to borrow. And a lot of you might know that now our credit status is junk. That's that, we, we, we're blacklisted in a way. That's the simplest way of putting it, but we, we're blacklisted as a country. And thus now, we're spending more time servicing our debt, uh, servicing the interest on in our debt, than the actual debt. So it's forced government to take a stance and say, listen, if you can save for your retirement, and that's why one of the benefits of a retirement account, and I'll touch on that now, there's lots of benefits there, but they're trying to get you to do it because government can't look after everyone. They can't. Our, our economy is just not structured in a way to be able to absorb everyone and sustain that. And it's an anomaly. We're the only third world country that gives out free housing, you know, amongst other things. But uh, before I end up as a meme or on Twitter or something, let me just stick to what I'm good at. That pay yourself first. 
if you can redirect 15% of your salary towards investing, creating an asset, and that 15% is split 5%, what you do is, you 5% you put in money market account. Please don't put in a savings account. Do not put do not put money in a savings account. I never understand this. You can put money in a in a money market account. It's fully liquid, meaning that you always have access to your money, and it tracks inflation. So why would you put money in a savings account and earn two percent interest? Okay. So that five percent, put in a money market account, and the purpose of that is just to save up three to six months of your salary. That's an emergency fund. A money market account will never make you rich. It just tracks inflation. It just keeps the value of your money. Once you've reached three to six months salary, that's great. You no longer need to contribute to that. It's just if your geezer bursts, you're not using your credit card. Okay. Then the real magic is in the other, the other 10%. Uh, uh, sorry, just before I go on that. That other 5%, once you have reached your your goal, which is three to six months salary for an emergency fund, you want to redirect that, that, that 5% into gold. And I'll spend quite a bit of time as to why. Why gold and not Bitcoin? Okay, gold. So the other 10%, like I say, that's where, that's really where we come in as an investment manager. It is to say, do I want to create an asset? What is an asset? An asset is something that can pay your sustainable income. Okay. And we live in a country where we're taught that you're supposed to spend 40 years creating wealth. You retire and then you spend the next 30 to 40 years destroying that wealth. Why would you do that? You've just, you've just wasted the first 40 years. Wealth is about creating wealth and then that wealth sustaining you without depreciating the capital. If you pass away and you've depleted your retirement savings, you failed at investing. Because how do you create generational wealth? It's about creating capital and that capital sustaining you so that when you pass away you're able to pass that on to the next generation. And then they don't, they're not starting from zero. They are now inheriting assets and they repeat and you repeat. And by the third generation you should be a wealthy family. It takes three generations to create wealth. I always say to my clients, if you're first generation, I'm sorry for you, it's highly unlikely that you're going to be wealthy in the true sense of the, of the word, but what we, can create, what we can do for you is make you financially independent, meaning you don't have debt and you're able to sustain your standard of living. Your kids will be rich, your grandkids and the ones will be wealthy. They're the trust fund babies. Okay. Because it's not just about creating wealth, it's also passing on wealth. Otherwise, what's the point? What's the point? You're sitting here, you're struggling and you're like, ah, why are they trust fund babies? Why am I not a trust fund baby? Because three generations, nobody started the journey. You know, and, you, and unfortunately you have to sort of make that sacrifice to be the first. So that your grandkids, they'll reap the, the rewards. And what we do for our clients is very simple. We create a portfolio for them. Um, I won't go too much into the strategy. We have very different investment uh, strategies. And if you ever sit with an investment advisor, they'll tell you, they'll tell you theirs. We firmly believe on a dividend-focused investment strategy. Quality stocks, large cap stocks. These are the most boring companies in the world. But what they give you is, number one, they've been there long before we were here. They'll be here long after. We call them the toilet paper companies. They always need toilet paper, you know? Um, these, because the purpose of an investment is to give you compounded growth. And compounded growth means your growth makes growth. And the only sure way to ever do that is to be earning a dividend. And it's to be earning a dividend from a company that is not market dependent. Okay, so I've said a lot there. What am I talking about? Uh, if we look locally, a company that we love is British American Tobacco. They make cigarettes. Smoke is smoke. It's that simple. 
smoke is smoke. It's a company that has always paid a dividend. They've never realized the loss in the last decade. So that's a company that it doesn't matter who the president is, it doesn't matter if the finance minister is fired, it doesn't matter what are interest rates, they're paying you a dividend. And the question is, is about how much is that dividend per year? We look at uh, Discovery. Um, <laughs> Because Discovery owns the medical aid industry. They own two thirds of the medical aid industry. And the thing about medical aid is people will cancel pretty much everything, but they won't cancel their medical aid. Because nobody wants to go to a government hospital. Okay. They set the fee, they own it. Their closest competitor, I'm talking private sector, is, is uh, Benitez. And they own about 15 or 16% of the market share. Discovery owns 68% of the market share. They have no competitor. And they just got their banking license. So if you own a Discovery share now, you get the bank for free. Those earnings haven't even come through. And Discovery is going to be the first online, fully digital bank. They're not going to have branches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's going to be all online. You know, uh, we own Old Mutual, another horrendous company from an individual perspective, but as an investor, love them because they've just been there forever. They've just been there forever. No one can replicate their footprint. No one can replicate their balance sheet. Same thing with, uh, there's multiples before I give you my whole portfolio now, then you, then you don't pay me. <laughs> you know, if you look offshore, um, my favorite stock in the world, Visa. Visa is a fantastic company, holds no credit risk. They have a merchant network that is second to none. To replicate Visa's network would cost you billions if not trillions because it's taken them decades to do it. And they provide such a simplistic service. You are somewhere, you're buying a coffee, the merchant says, do you have money in your bank account? Yes, I swap my card. Visa says, goes from the merchant, goes to the bank account and says, he's got the money, give him his coffee. That's it. No credit risk. They've paid a double digit dividend for the last 24 years. Those are the companies that you invest in. No trying to find out what is the next big thing, trading forex, binary options. We can have these arguments. The latest is, is uh, like I said, uh, cryptocurrency. You know, Ponzi schemes never disappear. They just change their names. Okay. And the thing about investing, where most people fail, is that it's extremely boring proper investing and it takes a long time. No ways am I going to create a sustainable income for you in five years. No ways I'm going to do If I promise you that I'm just lying to you. It's going to take us 20, 30, 40 years depending on how much of your income you, you want to give me. But it can be done.